So today I'm going to talk a bit, I will start with the finding the average of two integers. That's when you have input A and B, and the output is the sum divided by two, right? Like we learned in math. Uh, some of you are probably saying, oh, this is the infamous midpoint problem where you find the integer midpoint between A and B, and uh, someone named Marshall uh, showed it three years ago here. Oh, that guy looks familiar, right? Uh, basically, you know, if you do the obvious thing, add A to B, divide by two, and A and B are big numbers, uh, you get an overflow. Technically, it's uh, undefined behavior. Practically, you're going to get a wraparound and the wrong result, and uh, that's bad. Um, it's really important, used in many algorithms. It was broken in Java for nine years. And for us, the solution is just to use stud midpoint. So, okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about another problem. Finding the real average of two numbers. That's when, you know, the average of five and 10 is seven and a half. Uh, we need to use floating points, right? So here's a possible solution. Uh, function average gets two integers, A and B, returns a double. I'm converting A to a double by uh, multiplying by 1.0. Uh, that's the easiest way, adding B, dividing by 2.0, and uh, that's it. Uh, everyone loves uh, generic programming, right? So let's make it generic. Add a type name T, uh, sprinkle in some uh, concepts, and uh, that's it, right? Easy. Now I have three more minutes. Um, let's look at the domain size. The result is a double. It's eight bytes. A uh, double, eight bytes is 64 bits, right? A uh, double can hold at most two to the power of 64 distinct values. Uh, why at most? Because uh, there's some. Uh, non-important things like uh, infinity, negative zero, um, sort of nan, uh, single nan, whatever. Um, on the other hand, the thing we want to uh, calculate, a plus b divided by two, how many possible values for that? Well, it depends on t, let's assume long, long. That's also eight bytes, 64 bits. Um, the values we can get are almost twice uh, two to the power of 64. That's because between each two numbers, we also have the half as a result, like 7.5, all right? So that's bigger than the amount of values double can hold. So, I mean, double can't possibly hold all the values we need. That means no matter how clever I am, I just cannot write a function with that signature that will always return the correct result. Let's see when it breaks. Um, we'll just take some integer n, which is not representable by a double. For example, this uh, nice number. Uh, you can even Google it, the literal, and you'll find more information on that. And uh, we'll set a and b to equal to n. And uh, notice that average of a and b is not even a fraction, it's just a whole number. Uh, let's run it on Compiler Explorer. And um, here I have it. Uh, this is the function I showed you before. This is just uh, running it. Uh, we set a to this value, b equals to a. And despite having the same number here with the last digit being three twice, Somehow the average ends with a two. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, it ends with a two right now, but it can also end with a four depending on your rounding mode, which is a nice global state of your program, so it also breaks all kinds of abstractions and stuff. Uh, why is this useful? It's not. Uh, but we're not here for useful things, we're here for interesting things, sometimes that they're also important. Uh, it's important to understand floating points. Uh, it's important to understand that native C++ types are actually very complicated. Why, we talk about that all the time. There's this uh, famous paper, uh, frequently cited by many people who didn't even read it fully, including me. Uh, <laughs> despite all that, uh, developers tend to reach for floating points to solve integer-only problems. Uh, for example, this one, I, already, I, I encountered it more than once in real code. You want the bit width, like how many bits you need to represent the number n. So that's like the number of digits in base two, right? That's just the log base two. Uh, so you take n, run log two on it, that's a floating point of operation. So you're getting back a floating point number. And uh, what, what do you think, is this correct? How would you check it? And while you're there, I consider this function, which calculates the number of decimal digits and um, I'll leave that as an exercise to the audience. Thank you.